Final game of the day coming your way, and it is Tricked versus Monster. I do think this game could be very interesting. Tricked, when they have looked good, have looked very good. Uh, and they're going up against Monster, who seem to have found a bit of form coming into the NLC over the last couple of weeks. I think this one's the banger. I think if we had, you know, like the the, the smart game before us between Ents and uh, XL, this is going to be like the bloodthirsty, skirmish-heavy better version of uh, Singularity versus Riddle is kind of how I view this one. So I'm ready to see Monster like really hard flex here. And I want to see that creativity that people always talk about when they bring up Tricked. And I'm looking in particular towards the mid lane. I think both of these mid laners have been huge catalysts for their teams. We've seen Sebex on the Annie providing that engaged potential, being a, a, a real factor in that game. They very nearly lost. And Aaron as well, we've talked about extensively on Trick, consistently finding opportunities to set up his team. Even on champions like Azir, which is a signature, he will look to apply pressure in the lane. He'll look to rotate that outwards. And I think it comes down in the mid lane and what they can do to find priority and help the rest of the team. I kind of want the teams to solidify the image of themselves. Because the monster I saw last week was the monster I would have liked to see all the other weeks. Because they have a, they were extremely underwhelming in the beginning. Had some solo performance here and there, especially from Sepik, as, as Ox is mentioning too, that Sepik is an extremely interesting mid laner. But last week, the last game they had, they were just shining like Monster Rugby Gaming all over and they were completely dismantling their opponent. Now, Tricked had a very close game up against Fnatic and they were sort of even until they wasn't. I'm looking at them uh, to actually look into the mid to late game, how they're co uh, coming into this one with a different perspective. What have they changed? What have they adapted? What, how are they coming in with preparation into a team like Monster Rugby Gaming? And I hope that we are seeing both teams at their best because then we get, you guys are right. This is going to be a banger. Absolutely think so. And a, a big point you raised was looking towards what they're able to do in the middle and the late game. And I think that's going to potentially be important, but both these teams have shown they can be super aggressive in the early game. You know, we saw the Pantheon Elise picked up by Tricked in the mid jungle, and we saw the Callista frequently taken by Munster and looking to dive that bot lane. And I think it could well be two just teams looking to brute force each other in those early levels, unless one of them has thought, okay, we're going to offer a different strategy. And I think it's going to be super exciting to see how they try and implement those plans. Which is why I think my featured matchup is, I mean, we just talked about the strength of the mid laners, but their uh, partner in crime in the junglers right there, specifically Maxlor. Um, he's shown that when he wants to be, that he can be head and shoulders above the rest of the competition. That's what's expected of him when you have a name like Maxlor playing in the NLC. So depending on what type of matchup he gets, he's gone for those explosive matchups like those Elises that you were just talking about. I think that, that can like make or break this game because while the mid lane matchup is really hype and very exciting, I don't think the jungle matchup really holds up to the same degree and I think is far more weighted towards Monster, if Maxlor's on his good day. For me, I also want to see how the, uh, the bot lane matchup actually pans out, because in the beginning of the split, we had a lot of questions. How is Unforgiving going to do? And to me, he's honestly been, he's had good days and he's had bad days. That's how I've objectively, objectively looked at it. And then we see that Archie of PlayStation coming into this, they did fine against uh, ex Maxi and Bravado, but it's not ex Maxi and Bravado that I get the gist of uh, uh, like the bot lane to beat. I actually think Unforgiven and, and Heaver are one of the bot lanes you want to be to solidify yourself as one of the best bot lanes in the league. So I'm I'm looking for that to be two action in the mid lane, and I'm looking for that to be two action in the bot lane. And I think as well as just the 2v2 action, it's also what they can do on the map. I think PlayStation has started to unlock himself as more for map presence support. I think Heaver has been doing this for years. I remember back when I was playing and I would look up Heaver being challenger for like several several seasons when I would just started playing. This guy has been around very much a veteran and he shows that he knows where to be on the map. He knows how to apply pressure and provide for his team. And PlayStation needs to try and match that if they're going to find success in this game. It's not just a 2v2 there. Yeah, I, I, I really think that this has got the, the potential to be a very close game. I think Tricked uh, have got, I, I think they've surprised a lot of people in the in the NLC so far. And, and uh, with Monster's resurgence in form, this could be a really big test for Tricked, but also equally a test for, for Monster. How good are Monster really? This is probably going to be a team, that if they, they stomp, we're suddenly going to be starting to take a, a wider angle perspective of Monster saying, Okay, they're really bloody good. Uh, let's find out though. We're going to go to a quick break. And when we're back, we'll have draft for our final game of the day.
Final draft of the day. Tricked on the blue side, a monster rugby gaming on the red, and it is a thresh band to kick things off, followed very swiftly by the Syndra. Yeah, no surprise against Siva here, um, but Ox has been like talking about he was fresh for like since this, 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 the day this split started, about how this guy roams around on the map. So really no surprise there, and Unforgiven with the Callista Band 2 out of the way. So leaving open for the room for the likes of Ezreal and Ophelia so far. Let's see what Monster Rugby Gaming Bands are going to be. Holy Bear! <laughs> I hate how we just devolved this meta into, uh, it's no longer about like which AD carry do you want, it's just like Volley Bear, Blue Side, Priority One, go. Slappy Bear, but I mean, what do you what do you want? You've seen him today, you've seen him slap, you've seen what he does. The question is, is he good enough to ban? Like That's the question, right? So many people are just like hard first picking him on Blue Side, like is he good the, enough to ban? But also, Ezreal's much higher prio now. I think the problem is you look at all these AD carriers and it's like they're taking the priority in terms of bans. And so that leaves things like yep. the, uh, the Valero Rope. And they're actually going to first pick the Ezreal. I feel like this could be a situation, obviously, the Ash, which has been rising mm. up, the priority it achieves in bot lane with a volley is a big factor in the Ezreal. So maybe that's something that Munster looked to pull out late in the rotation. But I expect to see the Volley Bear early on if they're going to prioritize that. But Set is also open and available and has that flexibility. I honestly think it comes down to the fact that we have four AD carries banned out here, Senna being one of the things that PlayStation R2 have been playing in the past. So they just wanted to get secure that bot lane with the Ezreal here. And then you gotta pay the price, you're giving over the Slappy Bear here. We've seen it with great success, but so far it's lost on the inside and it's lost on the guards inside, so. Well, it's gonna be the Volley Bear first pickup on red side from Munster. Let's see what their first rotation they close out with. Karma instantly taken in, so they don't want to give away the Karma Ezreal lane, I assume. But y Yumi's still available, even though Yumi got nerfed. We have seen a lot of uh, Trist, uh, Ezreal Yumi still exist in the meta. And I agree with uh, what Ox is talking about. You know, you're probably going to see an Ash Karma lane um, come out here for the Volley Bear. I would prefer an AD carry that has a bit more damage onto our kit because I feel like with the time and space that Karma and Volley are going to buy you, while I love the utility that Ash brings, you now give away Ezreal and uh, Azir and you can outrange virtually anyone. So like, I totally get it. Ash is kind of like the common pick here. I think she's harder to execute at this level than maybe we've seen like the LPL where she has a much higher priority on. And I wouldn't even mind like a weird fringe pick like a Caitlyn or something. <laughs> I mean, they're just getting what they want to over at Trick 2. We talked about before that Asiya is one of Aaron's favorite. Yes, he can play that Pantheon, what else you want for that early game. But when you objectively look at it, Asiya is that go-to pick. He's the champion on that pedestal. So obviously you're securing that with the blind pick. And you can kind of see what kind of composition they're going for already. You see the Yawn for the top lane. I hope it's top lane. This is straight. It, it could maybe be going <laughs> anywhere, but, but, but let's see. Yeah, and I feel like... Pull it, pulling the owner in that situation, kind of, you don't expect to see the trundle because it's going to ruin the volley bears of flex. And also, they only have one pick available. You want to see Sevex find something to answer this Azir before it gets banned away. Being a Polish mid laner, Zoe's a big pick for him, as it is for many Polish mid laners. And they've managed to pick that up before the next rotation. But now there is that threat. There was 80 carries, the pool was already thinned. It's likely going to be targeted again here by Trick. Yeah, and I'd also imagine that the jungle bands will come out. I expected uh, the Olaf. I'd also expect the Trundle, these dueling junglers. So that way, uh, Volley Bear just has a very clear path for Maxlor to completely obliterate what other matchup is left for him in this jungle here. So hmm. it's going to have to be a weird ADC. Yeah, it definitely is. <laughs> and it's going to be trimmed down this champion pool. Maybe maybe we're not even going to see an AD carry. I don't know what Unforgiven champion pool consists of completely, but here goes the Ash that Ox has been talking about too. So they feel like they're backed up against the corner here for now it, until that pick just suddenly comes in and we're like, ah, that makes so much sense. But, but until now, we're still waiting in a fog where we don't really know what's going on. 
I mean, you need something safe for range, because again, you just get outranged on this composition. It's going to be really difficult to try to hit Azir and Ezreal. So you either go for a traditional ADC like a Tristana or a Caitlyn, and you try to match range or make it not as relevant, and then also scale up just as well. Or you go like completely the other side, and maybe you play another mage in the bot lane. Maybe we get like another Heimerdinger. Yeah, I feel like actually for Tricked, I wouldn't mind something like a Gangplank ban here, just because then it puts more pressure on the fact that if Monster go an AP bot lane, I like the Ziggs, uh, they're going to struggle with the damage profile on the bot side being heavy AP, and they don't have the Gangplank to sort of mitigate that in the later stages. But it looks like for now, they're going to focus on the combined movement speed of the Karma and the Sivir, and also that shove potential. And it really means that right now, Monster are kind of uh, looking at the bottom of the barrel with regards to AD carries. Yeah, there, there, are, there are a few things available. Um, when Sivir like, gets banned, you're really like, you're scraping there. You're like looking <laughs> in the gutter. You're like, what is this? I haven't seen this for years. There's oh, no way Jesus. they actually do this, right? It's Ooh, Draven. Actually, it's Draven. What? Okay, wow, well, it's okay. actually just Draven. But the thing is too, right, yeah, Draven's fine into squishy AD carries. Actually, he's fine into any AD carry here, but Ezreal is one of those AD carries you put up with a weak side here. And now you know what the bot lane consists of, or, or basically you should. This Karma could theoretically still go top. But you're still looking at a bot lane that know what this Draven wants to do. He wants to go ham. So you're just looking to stabilize this bot lane in the early game and outscale him. So let's see what they pair it up with. Oh, that sounds very safe here with a Brom too. <laughs> I, do not get me wrong, like, I'm sure that we're about to see an amazing Draven performance. The issue is, is that if these two teams are evenly matched, Draven is so hard to play here. Who does he have kill threat on? He can't hit anyone who he can actually kill, and he needs to stand, like, he has a giant area on the map that shows, I'm gonna walk to this location, and he's against an Orn, someone with a skill shot, and an Azir, and an Ezreal. Like, this dude, unless Unforgiven is just infinitely the superior player, which he could be and then style on people. He's just going to get blasted in these team fights. And I feel like the whole team is going to struggle on the back of that. It very much is going to be about Munster finding the momentum. And we did see that last week, but if they do mess this up, I feel like Trick just have it in the bag in the later stages. I don't think there's going to be an easy comeback like we saw. Well, it wasn't easy, but we saw Sebex with the Annie there and actually opting to fully commit to that early pressure. If you're going to look to focus bot lane, Brexi is a huge pick for that. And it's clear that Munster have committed and said, look, we have to win early or we're not winning. Yeah, Ox is completely right. This is a make it or break it team in the early game. Rek'Sai, you look past 15 minutes, useless if you haven't done anything. Draven, you need to make something happen in that early game. So I get the Rek'Sai commanding, oh, it's least encounter two. But you're on the clock at Munster Rugby Gaming and you need to show that performance you had last week with the early game dominance or else you're going to be screwed against Trick there. Just one of the small things, most people think about Draven, they don't necessarily think about him as a poke champion, but after he gets kind of his two BF swords, he kind of is a poke champion because he just needs to land one axe and it does massive damage. You pair that with a Zoe, a Karma, and then a Rek'Sai Tremor Sense to scout outsides. Uh, this is actually a, a decent poke comp that unfortunately is running into a superior range comp. So if they can poke lands, I think that's good, but I don't think <laughs> it should ever land. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw that fly land in your camera. Yeah, I, I, it's, the problem is that I've got these two incredibly bright lights in my room. And so and they go like, straight for the, the camera. Uh, yeah, well, they're, they're just buzzing around everywhere. And I'm, I'm just like trying to ignore them for the most part. Look, any, anyway, I, I'm going to go deal with that. I'm, I'm going to like spray my room after this because they are, they are tilting. Burn it. Me. You're going right. to burn it. I'm gonna burn my room, like straight up, burn the whole room down. Right, no, let's uh, let's let's get into this game, guys. Let's uh, <laughs> let's let's think about this Draven. Let's think about the early game that we want to see from Monster if they want to replicate what they did last week. Trouble and uh, hit brain, take it away. I'm a day to scoundrel. Thank you very much, and welcome back for our fourth and final game here at the NLC Day One, Week Four. Tricked versus Monster. Now. Both of these teams are currently tied in the standings in Group B, and they have both only lost one game, and that is to our undefeated team in this group, Fnatic. So whoever wins here kind of puts a statement forward for, no, I am second in Group B. And I mean, I don't want to be biased, but I did predict Tricked. And if I turned completely the nameplates off, I would have guessed that Tricked is, has actually picked the composition that Monster is styling on the Rift right now. Much more aggressive, much more in a timer. This is what we love seeing about Tricked. But then you see onto the left side and it's pretty much textbook back and forth uh, team fight potential right here. And I just want to put a little bit on the Draven for Unforgiven because I feel I felt like Frost hit the nail on the head. 
how are you ever going to reach that Ezreal or the Aze? Aze is going to be zoning you with sun soldiers all the time, while Soth has so much pressure onto Unforgiven. One small misstep, and you're not only going to get punished by Eren or a two, you're also going to get punished by Soth with potentially a kick into his team. On the other hand, you've got PlayStation on the Brom, right? One of the Sleepy Trouble Bubbles lands is going to put his big beefy shield in front of his uh, team and no poke is gonna go through. So unless Munster have an extremely cool and innovative way to play the early game, I'm not sure how it's gonna work. It's extremely hard for a red side Rek'Sai to gank bot lane unless the Ezreal and the Brom push past halfway, which I don't yeah. think is gonna be the case because you're playing a Karma here. You're gonna have uh, the early game push into this lane. So. I'm just trying to find ways for Max Slot to utilize that end. I'm like, hmm, maybe you don't play through ball. Maybe you just snowball the ball with that. I really would like to see a Chu get the Iceborne build as well on the Ezreal. I know it's kind of fallen off more recently, and a lot of people leaning into the Triforce on the Ezreal, but if you go Iceborne Death Dance here, that kind of, you know, the last patch Ezreal build, it still does work. It is still relevant. Unforgiven is going to be so useless in this game on the Draven. So that's something I would like to see here. Uh, you mentioned a timer for this game for Munster. Is it like a hard set timer or are we kind of looking for more item break points? Where, where is our timer set? So, really? The problem is not necessarily a timer as in the time will go by and then they will lose because they'll go late game. The thing is that the Rex, like the later the game goes, she will not necessarily have a champion to assassinate because Strict won a group here. Rek'Sai late game doesn't doesn't necessarily have a way into breaking through that window and getting someone on the backline when everyone is bounced up. And you also have an Azir there. So if the Rek'Sai somehow finds her way into the fight, Azir is just going to push her straight out. The timer, I feel like, is more onto the Draven because you need to cast in this gold early into the game to bully the Ezreal out. You mentioned it as well. Does he go towards the Gauntlet? Does he go towards the Bloodthirst? He's going to be just as durable as any other Ezreal as well as the, with the death dance into his build and it's not yeah. going to be necessarily that easy to execute playing all the way into the back line zoe is not going to have access there either so i'm not sure who's going to be sliding the way through that back line to catch that ezreal in the later fights oh back in the game did have a light pause there now obviously the expected thing from the draven is the shove in lane obviously when you're constantly having to catch those axes and constantly auto attacking you do naturally shove on the draven so Chew, obviously, gonna have a little bit of a harder laning phase to start off with, but they're very safe. They, they knew they would be playing like that. Maxlot, trying to see if he can find out Soth in the jungle. Ooh, I like that. Away. He's actually setting in the tunnel because if you're gonna ward anything in that bot side of the river for tricks, you're most likely gonna ward the tri -bush. So if he's able to come through the river on the right side and then go behind them, that's where he actually has the gank potential. So that gives you a, that gives away that Maxwell does indeed wanna play the bot side. He's gonna clear that bot side and if Trick's bot lane is able to push through halfway, he does have the tunnel ready to reply with it. I'll have to give an 8 CS up right now over a Choo Choo. Obviously getting shoved in pretty heavily here. A lot of prior. You now see that Heaver's moved over as well to kind of place Ooh. the vision down. Also to enable Max Law a bit more safety and kind of knowledge to know if he can go in for that gank. Because they want to set up the wards in this bush and actually that ward is outside the tri brush. Oh no, the pressure right there generated by Heaver caused a misplacement by a two on the ward, which means that now Maxwell could be even more successful by Trick Botley not having the reliable vision to keep themselves safe. I just want to see what this Rek'Sai is going to choose to do in the early game, what he's going to choose to move towards. Right now, she's pathing topside. He's pinging his race. Yeah, let's show like... me some action, Maxwell. Show me, show me that last week's Elise onto the Rek'Sai. Question is, is where is he going to go? There is a push up in the top lane for Waze also. Potentially, we'll see Maxwell try and put some attention in here. But we can't be focusing heavily on this bot lane because obviously it's exciting. It's a Draven. It's something different. It's not the Aphelios. It's not the Ezreal. Well, I mean, there is an Ezreal, but you know, there's something else in this lane. We're stepping away from the norm right now. 
Ooh, okay, so everyone is back in. They need to reset, they need Ooh. to clear the bot lane wave. That smells to me like a very free infernal. They're chasing to actually not allow the Ezreal to back because the Rek'Sai has already started that Dragon. Heva, though, might have overstepped a little bit. Well, Sevex is also moving over if there was going to be any play going down. So that's why Heva, I feel, was extending enough to, to delay those bases as much as possible. Which you obviously does have the teleport, so we'll be able to get back to lane unimpeded, but the tower, the dragon will get picked up. The CS lead is starting to get a little worrisome if you're a Chew. Obviously he does have a nice cheap item build on the Ezreal, at least for your first item. But it is feeling a little scary. Shikari just going to zone Wazor away. And this will just be more plates to Munster. They're having a really solid early. Yeah, they're, they're generating early game pressure. We talked about them being on a timer. We talked about them having to make the proactive plays here. And so far, the individual laners are making it work for them. Sure, Sebex is going to fall behind the Azir, you know, just a tiny bit, especially being pushed underneath his tower. It's not uh, the easiest to last hit with Zoe underneath the tower. But Botlane is doing great. The... Um, the Draven is ahead. He has a BF, so there's a tier onto that Ezreal. So I would like to see Maxwell slowly but surely starting to move towards that bot side. They have the whole thing warded. He has the uh, the tunnel ready and he can make it work. That is a great uh, state for the wave to be in right now. And Unforgiven is just letting me chill for the moment. Yeah, also enables Maxwell to go for a roam. Now, six minutes into the game, closing in on seven minutes and... It's been fairly chill as far as the action has gone. See, an early dragon was picked up for the side of Munster. But I think the way it being chilled, the game being slower, favors Tritz. So kind of the onus is on Munster to try and make these plays happen. And Shikari Oof. just going to chunk out Wazel here. Maxwell is actually making his way over and could go for one of those kind of cheeky long-range tunnels over the wall isn't going to do so he's actually going to start up this blue buff trying to deny that from error and that could be really really big one of the reasons why i do like the volibear mostly top lane rather than jungle is because he's so hard to itemize against he does a lot of ad damage auto attack damage and also a bunch of ap damage as well so it's extremely hard to start building items against him because he does so much uh, such mixed damage um from both sources, AP and AD. This is why Wazer right here knows I will not fight him. I will stay underneath my tower. He's purchased the call and he's like, fine. I'll just be a big front line later on for my team because we have the late game. So I feel like Trick is looking down the barrel to that 25 minute mark and they're like, that's where we're fighting. Shikari got the ultimate, got the flash. He feels comfortable just to try and deny them off this Herald. Sebex is making his way over, got the ghost on the spell thief. And Shikari actually just stood in the pit, one versus two, and dissuaded from any attempt on to that Rift Herald. Meanwhile, Maxwell was trying to lean bot lane, wasn't actually able to find anything with it. Oh, he will now. Yeah, he's going to get red buff off that, actually. Heaver, I'm really liking the way Heaver's playing this lane. Just complete confidence. Now, they are going to step away. The red buff, a bit too scary. And Trick's actually think it's stolen because they saw Maxwell with a red buff. The red buff reset, so I'm, I'm assuming they'll go check in a second, but I think in their heads they went, oh, we can't contest this because it's been taken away by Maxlaw. It'd be so funny if Soft takes um, sort of a route that doesn't check the red buff, which to me it looks like this is what they he's think he doing. Stole it. So what happened there was Tri <laughs> uh, Soft kicked, the, kicked over the wall, saw the red buff was gone, PlayStation saw Maxlaw walking out of the jungle with a red buff, and they went, oh, they nicked it. So in their <laughs> head, that red buff is gone. It's funny, I don't though, even know if wants to know how much they just outplayed tricked in the mental chess there. I, I don't think any, the, there's any outplay here because Max Law has no vision right there to actually see if Soft has checked the red buff or has taken the red no. buff. So even if that was the case, Max Law will not know that it's still up to go in and steal it. But it's absolutely hilarious, like the turn of events right there to yeah. make a trick think that, oh, okay, you know, the, the red buff is gone. We're too late, it's, guys. It's not the end of the world. It's, it is just a red buff. It is technically still there. So it's not like anything was really gained. It's, it's just a, it's just kind of funny to see that's how this went down now. Unforgiven has been picking up hella plates on this Draven. 
He's got the prio in the top lane now, with the dragon being down for another 30 seconds. It is going to get started up by Monster Rugby. I think honestly here, you're playing the poke composition, you're in a timer, you have the Draven, you will trade any day the Rift Herald for a Dragon. You're going to cash in on more plays, it's only 10 minutes in, you're going to feed the gold into your Draven, and he's going to be extremely strong when the Ezreal is still trying to stack that tier up to get to the to the Muramana. So it's a good play right here for, for Monster to try and trade that up. And um, I do approve. Get that gold onto your Draven and then pull him around the map to try a fend off trick. He's trying. Oh, so the gold does indeed go to the Draven. Yep. The top lane will fall. And mid Kate lane, we in. also Ooh. have a fight. Sevex able to survive there. They do bring the Sand Soldiers forward. First blood picked up for Eren. Well, this is kind of the play we expected by Trick, right? The very aggressive play coming in, and also it has to be generated by Sof. He's playing that listen, you're expecting the early game plays for him. It's not just the Rexer that can generate these fights. I thought he was looking for Eren here. He's got Shikari with him, but not actually going to be able to get it. So much solo gold went into Unforgiven, though, from that play. So much solo gold. He's going to base. That should just be the Bloodthirster off this base. Probably I would assume well. with the amount of gold he's got. Oh, he just spent a bunch as he whirling death there. There's the Bloodthirster. And almost the Boots. I thought he would have enough money to, to go straight for the Berserkers as well. But he's almost there. He's 20 gold up. He has the Bloodthirster. Now it's the time that you want to be pulling him around to fight. I just want to mention that Monster Rugby are playing this very by the book. Look at all that vision on the top side of the jungle. They played their Rift Herald, they laid down all the vision in the world. They're moving down the Draven, you will see that the, the vision is just going to slowly but surely moving towards the bot side um, of Soft Jungle. So instantly, Kiva just triple warded, quadruple warded the river and the opponent jungle. Name of the game is keep the Draven fed and alive. Oh, oh Heaver. Puts up the happy B as he dodges away on the Serena Shuffle. Wazor will force him to flash away. Heaver does land that snare, but the Bellows Breath actually will stop him from getting too much away. Stand aside used by Unforgiven. He's going to dodge away on the kick, and I'm really liking this. Because before the show started, we had a little chat, and one of the things we kind of hit on was we had some concerns about Munster's bot lane. Mm -hmm. And they are proving maybe comfort is the way forward for this team because Unforgiven is just bolting ahead in the laning phase right now. I mean, the answer to, to the question would be, can Unforgiven go past the Sand Soldiers? Can he reach a two in the back lane? Because if he can, you can one-shot him at this point. You have the superior items, and even later on into the game, you're going to be dealing a bunch of damage with uh, Infinity Edge coming in as well. Um, so, shall the game go to late game? It will oh. have to. We'll have to see the teleport though. Teleport's coming in. Unforgiven needs to dodge away from everything, but he is going to get caught out. They do miss out on the knockup, but the two is able to secure the kill onto Heaver. As Wazer takes down Unforgiven, that is all of those Draven stacks lost, or well, half of them. That's going to be pretty detrimental. Meanwhile, Monster are going to get some free time on this mid lane tier one. Take it to just below half HP. They don't get anything. That was a great play generated by Tricked. That bot lane should not go unpunished. They were just looking for the correct timing to pull down the teleports and absolutely punish that Draven and reset his stacks. Now, at this point, you cast in a, a kill onto your onto both your carries. Um, well, that might have been the own pulling one uh, out of the two. But he yeah, has definitely one. cast it in, and this is going to be a massive problem later on into the game. So the more they stall, the more they force Monster back, the more they don't allow Unforgiven to cash in on his Draven stacks. They're sitting at a very, very comfortable position. I was about to say that Trick looked a little bit itchy there to pull the trigger onto Heva, and they took his flash in the end, but that was a great play by them. 
Yeah, great teleport over to make that four versus two. Not really much the Draven's going to do, no matter how strong he is in his items. Civic, though, still doing a pretty good job just to deal with this mid lane. With the more sparkles, actually able to do some pretty significant damage to those towers with the extra damage on your autos. Tower falls in the bot lane, and Shikari was able to pick that up. He's got his Triforce now on the Volley Bear. Maximum Shikari setting up a Death Brush. Let's see if they can spot anyone out. There is a ward that will spot them the second they walk out. Uh -oh. And the Chew gets knocked up, flashed on, tries to shift away, is able to flash up. But Shikari throws out the ultimate, and Max Lord chases him with the Void Rush. Easy pick up there for Munster as they get the mid lane tier one as well. Hey, great peek on to Achu. You know, they find him into the jungle. The passive from Rek'Sai is paying off. They double flash on him, making sure he doesn't get away. And they cash in on that mid lane tower. Now it's going to be extremely difficult for Azir to step forward to try and get um, that CS. And also they're the first ones to get priority into that river. Also, uh, take a look at all the vision. Monster Rugby Gaming vision has been very detrimental on how they play around the map at any given point they know where the trick members are and that has saved them so far a lot of trouble in having to fight them well, it's like monster are just willing to give up this second drake uh for well the third drake the second drake for trick the mountain drake a mountain souls can be very nice into the likes of sevex and mm -hmm. unforgiven but mainly sevex and shields that kind of negate somewhat of the poke so We'll probably expect to see some fights around these dragons next time. And you're going to have to try and figure out a way to engage these fights if you're monster. Because I don't think the tricks are going to be walking into you by accident like Achu did. I don't think they're going to fall for the same tricks. As in, you create a death push and trick just walks into you they're gonna have to figure out a way because the Rek'Sai is not strong enough yet so it's not gonna get much stronger three and four items into the game and even if she does she won't have a way to get into the team fight so I just want to see how will Munster play with their vision right now to try and choke out trick completely to the point of no return because I feel like this is their win condition right now try and skyrocket that gold lead and then slap them with your money So I was hanging around in that top side, seeing if he could find a pick on to Unforgiven. However, unable to do so. Curious to see where Max Lord decides to use that Herald. You could potentially see that with all the pushing that's happening in the mid lane, you could potentially open a tier two in the mid lane and make it even harder for Trick to get out of the base. Again, Vision has been the name of the game for Monster here. They've been keeping it up. They're keeping the members uh, safe with it. And look at that. Look at all that Vision around the map. It's fully red. Wherever the Draven walks, he knows when he's going to be in danger at any given point. Ooh. Unlucky bubble there. Didn't actually connect it with the walls. So Sevex won't be able to chain through into Eren. Pop that Herald. You know you want to. I feel like that is the play. Uh, they they kind of wanted to use in mid, but multiple people have shown up. The Trevor Sense actually spotted out Flay Station there. They knew where he was. And Monster, 18 minutes into the game, do have a lot of prio in all of the lanes right now. But... They are being a little hesitant to commit with this Rift Herald at the moment. There's no way you want to look at a 20-minute Baron, right? Because they have extremely good vision in the top side of the jungle. The Rexa has been going around that area a lot, and they're sticking the Draven towards the top side as well. And I'm like, surely you not want to pull a 20-minute Baron play when you just have a Draven that can do consistent damage onto the Baron. But saying that, tricked have been completely deprived of any vision, so I wouldn't get it past Monster to actually start it and then force Trick into an unfavorable fight. Yeah, you can see the vision actually getting toggled. This is what Trick can see right now. Yeah. Except it's a bit more zoomed in. They can't zoom out this much. They so are. They see, they see even less than we do then. Yeah. Hip brain. They see even less than we do. If we could actually quickly switch back and just see what Monster can see, that'd be Ooh. great. Because oh. this is Munster's vision right now. Obviously, it can be a little deceptive with all the tunnels around as well. So it looks like there's a lot of red there. But there is good vision around there the barren area. <laughs> the base has come down and Unforgiven has picked up his Infinity Edge. He's got 
a bloodthirst at Infinity Edge. This is one of the scariest points for the Draven. Well, to be into the Draven. Double buffs as well. <laughs> they Draven might just 20 a, minute Baron. Draven they just is a straight up my 20 minute right Baron. Now, yeah. And they have been strolling around like sharks that it. barren area and they're just starting it straight up they're gonna be having sandbox in the mid lane constantly pushing the wave mind you trick pink the baron before so they do want to check it and luckily for them yeah there is a blast going up that's like that is gonna be enough so to dissuade fine. them yeah they, they don't lose anything. They're just trying to force Trick to make a decision. Uh, this is something that we saw in our previous matches as well, right? You put the opponent team on the spot, letting them choose what they want their play to be. Either way, they will lose something because they had Sebex pushing in mid lane. If you allow him to push further, you lose CS and experience, while the rest of the team, uh, while uh, Shikari is pushing down bot lane, you have to respond to that, and the yeah. rest of the team is doing Baron. So They're whatever your proactive lane. play would be, as trick has to be stopped right there because you need to stop the barn from going down therefore it stops your tempo or whatever plans you have for it there it is the herald gets some of that in the mid lane did expect that it was just about to time out from max law can ways will actually stop this does get the knock up and the minion wave is actually there so the herald maybe a little bit forced could cost shikari his life as he jumps over the ram slows down still a now looking to jump onto him shikari gonna have to flash away meanwhile the turret We'll be cracking open in the mid lane. Now is obviously the Azir turret, but meanwhile, I think it does get something. And now looking to jump onto Aaron, but Aaron able to shift away to safety. A lot of attention used there, and Tricks may just be able to turn this into their third. I think they've got some on mid lane. No, no, my fault. I thought somebody was still hovering in the mid lane, and I thought that it might have been um, at two right there, but they just keep on pressuring every single side. They're pulling Trick apart. Usually, it's Trick that makes this wild plays, this unbelievably, you know, uncalled for plays that you're not expecting. Some of them, it's like your solo queue plays that catch you completely off guard. And a monster are pushing them to the limit. And so far, Trick have yet to respond with anything. I do put Soft to sleep a little bit there as the two takes some poke from Sebex. Base comes in for Unforgiven. He still hasn't gone for the Berserker's Greaves. Just goes instantly in for a zeal. More damage, baby. Just flat damage right now for Unforgiven. I like ah, it. I respect you don't need it. The boots. No one runs to him anyway. He doesn't need to run away from someone if no one, if no one runs at him. Uh, this is another great example of generating pressure on the map. The start in the Baron will again mid lane and bot lane are pushing in. Shikari is even keeping Wazer busy, so he's not going to be uh, able to TP into that, but Hiva getting chunked here kind of ruins the plan. Yeah, I also think Max Law took way too much damage. There wasn't anyone actually close enough, and they may just lose their tier 1 mid for this. They're all chunked down, they need to reset. That means no one is available for the mid lane defense and tricked. They finally find the opening that they were looking for. They finally look for the response. Now, all they need to do is sort of fix their vision. You need to clear all that vision that's behind your lines because you could potentially be getting flanked by a really big volley bear who has already completed the Trinity Force and is on his way to the second item. And you see the minute that mid lane turret falls down, the map just grows for Trick. They're able to move yep. in more offensively into Munster because Munster have lost a pillar to hide under, a, a, a safety net for themselves. Yeah, so now they have to be even more zombie. timid moving through their jungle. Unforgiven is going to try and get here to save this turret in the top side. Should be able to do so. And with that blood first, he's already back to full health. And now Eren has to be a little bit careful. The teleports are getting used as Maxlaw goes in for the tunnel. Eren oh, shifts away, but Shikari is on the flank. The Call of the Forge God gets summoned in, and Shikari is the one to get knocked up. He's going to use the Stormbreaker, but oh. already gets broken himself. Unforgiven, left alone. Everybody's just jumping into him. He's healing for days. He gets him with a whirling death in response. But the shutdown has picked up. The Sebex misses out on the Paddle Star, looking now for Wazor. We'll get him out with the bubbles. The knockup actually hits no one, and Sebex Paddle Stars into Wazor. The Ignite gets used on the Spell Thief, and Munster 
Kind of just left their AD carry unchecked, and now Maxlaw is going to have to try and tunnel away to safety, but he gets exhausted, and Eren looks to join in. Trick's health bars are a little bit low, but Eren can join Castle. in. He's got the damage to work with. They've got the shield. That's going to be the shuffle onto Sebex. Sebex looks to try and jump away for the moment. Has that paddle star. Eren goes golden. Maxlaw still surviving for the moment with a void rush. Goes in, secures the kill. Almost gets another one. And Trick's continue this long, long chase. He managed to put one to sleep as the kick lands onto Sebex. The shutdown has picked up for Eren. Heba will be next to go down as well as he's trying to get it. But Sof will get him with a sonic kick. And Monster thought they were the hunters and they ended up being the hunted. Because right there, Unforgiven tried to 200 years the entirety of Tricked. And his whole team was all the way across the wall. Could not assist him, could not help him. Can Shikari and Unforgiven stop the Baron? The answer is yes. Can they get out alive? Shikari is about to get ultimate. It is scary. You're going to take a lot of damage from a two. It's the true shot just skims him and i'm very happy to see that a has gone for the iceborne build it feels like the later this game goes now unforgiven will have a bit of a harder time but up in cs actually up in gold as well on the draven right now infinity edge rapid fire cannon bloodthirster yeah he's got a uh, 1100 gold lead over a right now so the, the flat damage this draven does is is mental i mean you saw in that last fight unforgiven just one versus three got a kill traded one for one and that was without any shields and heals coming in from Heba as well. This exactly. is why I'm saying that uh, it was monster hunting for the skills, but they ended up being hunted because they were uh, kind of pulled apart from each other from Tricked. That was very well played uh, by the set of Trick there. And now here we go again, because three items completed onto your Draven and you want to fight now. You well, can't 30... let it go further into the late game. 33 seconds and there's Mountain Soul as well for this side of tricks though absolutely they want to give it up and that's the perfect time to er erect the like the legacy of Sharima there to make sure that tower is up there's a safety ground but actually denies monster very heavily from moving into this jungle unforgiven separated from his team trying to make his way through as maxwell will spot a couple people out with a tremor sense sebex able to get himself a little something something here whirling death onto flay station will cut him low Unforgiven is pretty low on mana, so you have to keep that in mind. In comes the dragon, in comes the call of the Forge God. Maxlaw on the sidelines as so Shikari gets bopped back, and the fight is on. Shikari just squashed in a second, but they are able to trade it out. Maxlaw also getting cut down as Eren is on a rampage. Unforgiven and Sevex still fairly healthy though, and still looking to chase for blood, still looking to chase for these kills. But Chu also got the health bar to work with. Sevex gets one to sleep, and now with the unstoppable, Chu is just getting melted through. Unforgiven! Just juggling the axes, gets the kill onto a Chew. And we talked about how hard it is for Unforgiven to get into the fights, but if you never get to touch Unforgiven, not only is he gonna touch you, he's gonna chop you straight open with those two swords in his hands. If we watch this again. That's an old fight. <laughs> that's an That's old a fight. very old fight that resulted in the Baron. But if we can have the replay from the fight that just happened, you will see that Unforgiven goes completely untouched and he's able to chop the entirety of Trick right there. Once Z has already used his dust, then he is susceptible to getting um, chunked down and he had to walk out. Own walks out as well. And then Achoo, Arcane shifts in feeling confident for that 1v3 that doesn't end up going his way so we were talking about soul happening and right now i think monster are very comfortable taking these fights look again unforgiven just find Sof alone in the pit he's like okay i'll dispatch him then he fights wazer he's like fine i'll just throw some of my uh, auto attacks onto wazer try to force him off of the fight and overall it was very very well played by monster there last whisper picked up on to unforgiven we do see though the ornaments are coming out. You got the Forge Fire Cape, the Infernal Mask, the Zonya's Death, um, the Zonya's Hourglass actually upgraded for Eren. So not waiting out for the Death Cap, they just want to get the immediate burst of damage with the Frozen Fist onto a Chew as well. Chikari just going to wallop away on this turret and Monster feel comfortable to trying to sway this Baron. The teleport's going to get used as the bubble actually lands on to the backline. 
Full of the Forge God's going to get used to Sevex jumps in. Oh Half health PlayStation to Chew. Throws out the True Shop Barrage and gets onto a couple of members and tricked. Just happy to get away with their lives, but this does mean that Munster have the inside track on mid lane right now. Shikari and Heva just going to zone everybody away. Eren's going to have to shift over the wall. Tier 2 turret oh. is dead already, though, so Munster, it's going to be quite hard for them to push for more in mid right now. Honestly, mission the accomplished. I felt like Trick wanted to pull Shikari's teleport right there, and now it's Munster pulling the trigger, right? right? Are we doing Baron? Are you going to come face check us? This is the name of the game right here. Whoever che face checks who is the one that's going to end up dying. Trick have pulled way too far into mid lane and could be getting flanked by the entirety of Munster. The alt Ooh. economy is down at the moment when they don't have that Call of the Forge God. They don't have that easy engage. Eva may be playing a little bit of a bait there by also attacking that ward. And that forces Trick to move over, but the resets are coming down. And actually, it looks like everybody's going to get out. Eva playing with fire. Shikari still has the flag. He's sticking around. He's waiting. And they started the Baron. This could be a huge flag from the monster top laner. Shikari has been getting popped in these fights, but everybody is in there. Shikari now getting chased on, turned on, uses the ultimate and the flash. And now he's just looking to try and limp away from the tricked members. Is able to get away with his life, but both his summoner spells used. And that was actually pretty detrimental. Tricked once again, kind of walking away with the, the upper hand from this bait. It's just kind of the back and forth, right? Whoever is going to catch who, they need Unforgiven to land one of these crucial axes right there to try and chunk someone down to push them away. And Monster Rugby are back onto the objectives, back onto the Baron. I would say if they were back onto the Baron. They got a minute 30 till this Mountain Salt. They want to get the crowd here, get some control around this area. You can see the vision very happily very comfortably in favor of Munster around the Baron area. Lots of red wards over deep into Trick's jungle, but not too many actually on the river or in the surrounding area of the Baron. So, oh, so obviously you have to play forgiven. around that. Big this pickle here. Legacy of Sharima has been summoned up in the mid lane and True Shot Barrage is going to oh, stop Unforgiven. Huge. Unforgiven's dead. This is really, really bad for him. He's going to try and kite out the team, but he is just blown up. The shutdown is picked up by Soft, and it's Atu actually just could just... them, the Baron. That, that's Baron. At two, with a great sense of where Unforgiven would be backing, I feel like just got them a free Baron right here. Unless Max look and give some sort of miraculous steal to his team. He does have the flash available. Sevex is going to have to make some real work happen here. The Call of the Forge God's been thrown out. Shikari and Heaver forced away the Flash and the Stormbreaker as they choose chasing onto Shikari. But Shikari's able to get away. The slow actually lands onto Sof as the, the Chew shifts in forwards. And even with Unforgiven dead, Munster somehow, they somehow hold onto this Baron once again. And the health bars are actually very, very low onto Trix. But wazel has got a flank onto Sevex. The Knight on the Spell Thief will actually give him the movement speed to work with as the Serima Shuffle is tunneled away by Max Law, and both of the junglers are poked out very, very low as the Mountain Soul has spawned. Unforgiven is back on the map as well, and the resets are coming in. <laughs> Sebex does have that teleport available to him, but Max Law, he does not have that opportunity, so he should just be sold over to Trix as Heva is going to give up his life. It's Chew looking for the kill. Teleport comes in from Sebex, and somehow Heva lives. It doesn't end. It's a continuous back and forth for kills, and I think Shikari might have gone a little bit too far. Yeah, well, the knockoffs off to Sevex, that's going to be him dead. Heva runs into the alcove, and he's going to get caught out. Shikari has to go golden. The rest of the team are coming in to try and save the day, but PlayStation's able to get the kill. Wazel now getting kited by Heva, as Heva is in no man's land right now. But Maxlaw's making his way forward. The true shot barrage is dodged away, and Unforgiven is shuffled into the waiting jaws of a chew as PlayStation secures the kill. This is Baron for the side of Tricked. And there were a lot of questions, right? They were like, why Trick, Georgia? Why have you chosen Trick to be your chosen one in the top four? This is exactly why. These guys have identified them. Yes, the back and forth have been a huge fiesta, but they have always been in favor of Trick. As long as Trick were able to stay even in gold with Monster, they would outscale them. They would get the map control. They would get the fight control. And it shows right here, even in gold, they're still able to pull ahead. They grab the soul. And now they are going to be able to grab the Baron as well. We talked about this. It goes like game. It's a trick game. And they are able to pull through. Monster with the desperation plays right there. They try.
trying to make the composition work. They're trying to get the picks in and Trick are not allowing them. Let's have a little look at this absolute back and forth once again. That was a slaughter. It wasn't necessarily a back. It was a back and forth until that specific point where Shikari chooses to take the blast gun over. He's like, well, maybe we should fight this. Oh, whoops. The dragon has actually gone down and Sol is on trick right now. So what Sol would do, maybe we should run away. Then Maxlo is like, well, I might have put soft on the side. Well, it wasn't the case because absolutely entirety of trick is waiting with open arms to cash in even more heals. Looks like Shikari is looking for a little play here onto Wazor. Nice lore in the bush. Aha. They're going to get the stun off. Die? They've got the knock up. Wazor well, actually with the Bellows Breath able to survive it. And he's going to throw down the Call of the Forge God to try and turn this one around. Actually gets some serious damage onto Semex. They're going to jump through with a Void Rush, but Maxlaw might just die. Wazor, well, go one versus three. Fights the kill. He will go down. But the rest of the team, they're in the base. They're looking just to close this out. Shigari's going to have to teleport in, but Soft chasing onto Unforgiven. Unforgiven just trying to sustain, trying to survive as the turret will fall. Unforgiven gets shuffled back and taken down. Semex now. Next to join Venerin, King Sao Shikari, and Heva chase back to the fountain. Tricks have just found their opening, found their moment, and they're going to be able to close this game out. Monster tried for the plays, but everything just fell apart as it got later. Tricks go second in Group B. And Monster with the last second desperation play on the Tankiest member of Trick's team. Wes was like, Mwahaha, fault. Keep continuing to try and kill me. I will kill one of you in that 1v3. And I will also end your base with the rest of my team pushing in with the Baron buff that you very kindly donated because you couldn't fight us anymore because our composition is superior. We reach our spikes. Sure, it took 40 minutes, whatever, origin like, but they did do it. They pulled through and they have solidified themselves as the top two in the group straight after Fnatic. You predicted them. You, I, you were the what only one. What can I say, man? Superior them. analyst today. I, I bow to you. I bow to you. That was that was a pretty poggers predict there. Everybody else went monster. Monster looked like the cleaner team. You guys were non-believers. I I was an unbeliever. I'm well on board the raccoon hype train right now, though. That was that was great from Trix and. Man, I'm, I'm I'm out of breath after that. There was so many back and forth. There's so many elongated fights. It was. It was one of the most fun games we've had today, but we are going to end it there, guys. We're going to cut to a quick break, and when we're back, we'll actually let the analyst break that down a little bit more and have a little interview. So don't go anywhere. We will see you after the break.
Well, everybody except for Trouble was wrong, including our resident Danish man. And I believe, Gilborg, you do have something to say to your home country. Well, first off, uh, congratulations to Trouble. I should have been on that trick train right there. And I should have known. In Denmark, we have a bit, we have a saying. It basically goes, vi er røde, vi er vil. And if you translate that, it basically goes, we are red, we are white, we are Danish, dynamite. And that's why I should have known. <laughs> That trick was gonna win today, cause goddamn did they bring the explosive today. They were so patient in the early game, but little did we know that was just the fuse slowly igniting. And then suddenly they just exploded. They were ready. They were patient for every Baron fight. They were there to take the win. And I should have never doubted the Danishman. I think there's moments like this one in particular where we saw such a domination in the bot lane from Heaven and Unforgiven. I think the amount of plates that went into this Draven's pocket was just obscene, this CS lead as well. And Trick were just so patient around it. I could see a lot of teams fall apart feeling worried about that, but they knew they had the composition that outscaled. They knew they had to wait for their opportunity. So despite the fact they lost those out of towers and all those plates, they managed to withstand and their patience in this game was the big factor. And just picking up off on that, think about how many times Trick started the Baron and then pulled off of it. It was three or four times this game. And it's that type of patience to recognize that, hey, you know, we'll probably get called slow. People will point figures that it wasn't that clean. But at the end of the day, by pulling off Baron, they didn't lose anything. They knew that they were going to outscale this and there was no reason to go for the flip. And that is such an uncommon trait in all of the NLC so far. So to finally see a team like really understand what their win conditions were and have the mental endurance to stay true to the path, especially in a game when it looked frankly lost at level four, I'm just so impressed with this squad. Yeah, and I actually uh, had the pleasure of interviewing Soft last time around, and, and he, you know, the whole team seems really switched on about the game. One of the things that we, one of the things that we complimented um, Soft and the team on last time around was that they seem really smart. Like they seem really smart about the game, and that's something that could be really useful to have in game. And actually, speaking of Soft, I've got him uh, standing by to have a chat with. So let's uh, let's bring him in. Hey, hi, mate. How are you again? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Good. Yeah, no, doing really well. And obviously, nice to see Tricks continuing to... I don't even think it's a surprise at this point. I think I think at this point, it's it's just continuing to do what you set out to do. You know, you're know, you looking like a, an incredibly good team. And I think most people will be uh, hesitant to vote against you, especially with those predictions that we put <laughs> earlier today. Yeah, yeah I'm, Look, I'm glad. I'm glad. Let, let's talk about the early game. So Frost mentioned, you know, it looked pretty dire very early on with the way the bot lane was going. Um, it looked like Shikari was dominating top. It looked like uh, the Draven Karma was a real nuisance for you on the bottom side of the map. Talk to me about how you as a team deal with that and how you got from that position to your mid game where things started to stabilize. Um, I mean, we we were obviously, we knew they were on the timer um, and we basically, I mean, it wasn't really skill, but we were just waiting for Ezreal power spike. And I think they made a mistake of not spamming the dragons early game because if they don't get the soul this game or an early soul they're definitely going to get outscaled regardless like their champs are just so much worse than us at late game and i think them trading the top side is i think it's fine but i think we got the second drake right or was it the third one i think it was the second drake um and i think from there we like it, we had so much free time in the game to basically just chill collect waves and not give them too many openings as soon as we were on like two three items on Ezreal, we were always going to win like every single team fight, regardless of how much gold Draven had, just because he's so far out of range of the Azir. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think I think a lot of what was said on the on the desk was the same sentiments that you held there. It's like if you don't absolutely roll with this Draven comp, eventually the Azir and Ezreal yeah. are just going to completely outrange, and there's nothing they can do about it. And obviously, then yeah. when you have when you have the Orn on the front line, like he just needs a couple of you know items, a couple of big armor <laughs> items, and suddenly. Uh. Uh, and suddenly Draven doesn't do any damage. So that, that definitely felt like the way that you played it and you played it really well. And something else that we really um, liked, and you probably heard Frost talking about it, was was your decision-making, especially around Baron. Um, who makes those decisions in game? Um, and and how do you go through that process of, of, of deciding when to engage, deciding when to peel off? Because we felt like all of your Baron decisions were, were almost perfect this game. You, you really feel like you played it really well. So who makes those decisions on your team and, and how do you go through that process? Uh, I, I mean, we definitely have a democracy uh, in in like communication in the game, but I'd say our 
biggest voice in later get like mid to late game is is probably Wazor. Though I think the Barons or this game specifically were very uh, mixed from from everyone. I think we all understood that because we actually rolled like dragons for some reason reason like we could always pull off the Baron and be under no threat because we always had the soul to fall back on. So we were only using the Baron as bait for um, the volley TP or to force them into a choke point for the Ornol. And they actually played it quite well with the Zoe. Like I was I was surprised that they were stalling a, a really long time. So it actually took us quite a while, but then um, they were on such a timer that they were forced into uh, a bad fight on the on the fourth dragon for us. So that's what kind of our goal was. We were just using the Baron as like a fish food basically. And we were always knew that if it doesn't work out uh, and we don't like force them into a bad decision, we could always rely on the on the dragon soul to win the game regardless. So yeah. I, I, yeah, I think you played out those conditions well. Uh, uh, finally, this this is kind of the trick that we're used to seeing, right? This is the trick now that we're kind of coming to expect. Very very good sense heads about the game. Like you see, you're very intelligent about the way that you play. You're surprising people. Um, you know, with your ability to bounce back. Your late game decision making seems really good. What is it you felt like you struggled with versus Fnatic though? Because that is obviously a oh. game where, yeah, where Fnatic took the win. Yeah, what, definitely. What is it that, that, that Fnatic did that you found difficult to deal with? Uh, I mean, their fundamentals were definitely better than us. We picked a comp that we didn't fully understand. I mean, we picked the Mad Lions comp, right? And those players are really insane pulling that comp off like almost every LEC game. But we realized that we just weren't as good as them, obviously. Um, and we got punished on the fundamentals by Fnatic. We actually got early leads um, through, uh, I think, jungle and uh, like I think a, a bit on top and we even had like some leads in like mid and bot as well and we were scaling like pretty good but we we always we just never did anything in mid game and they like took over from I think the third Drake onwards because we were just bad at controlling the mid lane prior and uh, like controlling the objectives because of that and they used the corky package well and we didn't really have an answer to that in game obviously we were unsatisfied since we basically lost so slowly and like, we were just bleeding to death without doing anything we just rolled over basically so we had like a good long vod review over that game and basically worked on fundamentals in scrims this week and i can't tell you how bad scrims have gone they've gone absolutely terrible this week like we won like two games overall but they were a good learning experience every single game and we came into this with the mindset lose is improved so like yeah we just we just improved a lot this week even though we lost like literally nearly every scrim game uh just because of the fact that we looked over that Fnatic game and we knew what to work on and we focused it this week. I mean, that's that's really interesting because um, obviously you wouldn't, you wouldn't look like it. You, you didn't look but like you had been losing bad, a week. Right? Yeah, <laughs> like it was so bad. Like we've, we were, we usually like really high win rate, but like this week was terrible. Yeah. Um, and finally, actually something, I just because I, I think you, you give a really good answer, so I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. <laughs> um, the, the, the analysts were talking very briefly about the value of doing nothing in a game. You like like the value of not forcing yourself to make a play. Uh, do you guys use that mentality? Is that something that you actively think about? Uh, I think depend definitely depends on the comp. Um, I mean, I first game against, I think it was Dusty, we, we flexed the Azzy top right to get the Pantheliste against the LeBlanc because it like it really like ruins LeBlanc in mid and that game we're obviously on a timer so we're forcing absolutely everything like it's better to like flip and it go bad then do nothing with a t uh, with an early game comp and that just end up being out so I think mm. it definitely if we draft more early game and you're on a timer like we would definitely be forcing like something like diving on stacked waves or whatever but like in a game like this there's so much value in literally not doing anything no matter how unskilled it is because we we know that as long as we we kind of like pick up what we can uh, like take some like CS loss here and there, we can definitely like come back and like outscale basically. It's a boring way to play, but I think the meta is generally more geared to that right now. So yeah. Uh, so honestly, yeah, it's always a pleasure in interviewing you, yeah, dude. Um, you I too. hope you, uh, I hope you have a, uh, I to have a good split because Trick has been thank uh, a pleasure you. to watch. <laughs> and, and, I, and, I, and I'll get to uh, see you soon, I'm sure. Cheers, thank you. Bye, bye. Uh, and of course, it wouldn't be rounding out the interview with having our Orcs patented play of the match. So uh, I think this might be a long one. So let's, let's go through it. Yeah, and essentially what I wanted to highlight here is we saw a lot of back and forth situations from Trick and Munster. And this was a moment where Munster looked to collapse on the side of Trick. And it ends up being a really extended play because Trick aren't quite well uh, at their super scaling point yet. But really, it is just a driving force here going forwards. And it's almost like the head to head between him and Unforgiven to take each other down. And then it's a situation where Munster, they feel the pressure is on them. They're still fishing for these picks and look to continue with this. And I feel like the play itself isn't sort of as insane as some of the other plays we've had today. But it's very much the story of this game, the patience that comes out from Trick, 
They stall out the play and wait for Eren to come in on the reset. And then Eren could just jump up, jump in here with the ult, but instead they play it as slow as possible. They give as much time over to Eren to find the right angle. And then it's the back and forth here. You'll see how the low HP members of PlayStation and Wazo here just, they play very much back and forth. They don't overstep, obviously, Wazo does go down there, but then it allows the rest of the team to re-engage. And as much as this play wasn't the most flashy, wasn't the most huge, that was the game for Tricked as well. They play this entire game in this style where they're not looking for the flashy plays, they're looking for the slow, long play that will net them the win. Um, and guys, obviously you, you heard uh, stuff there. I, I, I think he's such a great interviewer because he does go into, into so much detail about the game. Um, what do you what do you guys think about about sort of tricked as a team then listening to the way he talks and also the way they play and they definitely to me feel like as a whole squad really switched on about the the sort of the state of the game and how to approach it i mean you kind of have uh two interviews back to back where you have deadly in one hand who's saying uh we're basically treating our stage games like scrims it doesn't matter if we don't win finals we're looking towards eu masters like we're effectively here to speed run and then you have trick come on and soft speak and say something to the extent of, um, you know, learning is losing. And both routes lead to development and kind of, you know, hopefully long-term growth, but obviously a very different like atmosphere and attitude that comes along with it. And I'm not here to like put Excel down for, for being cocky or anything. Like I love that type of energy that comes with teams. Um, but I really do hope that the the energy that Soft is giving up is kind of personified within Trick because I think that's what will lead to really amazing long-term success and a squad that maybe people weren't looking at. I think it's really easy to gravitate towards, you know, the known names of you attached to either an LEC Academy team or you see a Max Floor and you see these names, you're like, okay, these guys are going to be good. And it's harder to give confidence into uh, maybe a, a bit more under the radar uh, team like Trick. And I, know, I love the mentality to you. The fact that he's just, like, he's just like, you know what? We got smashed in scrim this week, but we we, we had to get smashed because we had to get our fundamentals in the right place. And that's just what you need to. Sometimes you need to bite that lemon and it's not going to taste good, but it's what's needed for you to move forward as a team. And I feel like it's one of those situations where what is the goal of your scrims? Because I know teams will go into a scrim set and be like, oh, we came out this way against this team. And sometimes you do have those scrims against a stronger uh, opponent where you're trying to see what the limits of your roster is. But I think the best way is always going, what is our goal for this scrim? What are we trying to get out of it? and looking at an aspect of your game and improving. And if you lose the skin scrims, sometimes it can be demotivating for a team, but if the end result is your improvement, then you're getting the right sort of practice for you and your team. I, I, okay, let's let's obviously move away from that last game with Tricked. Uh, obviously, we've seen some replays throughout the day here, just kind of getting a brief overview of what happened. Um, anything that, that you think really stood out to you today? For me, it was uh, XL's ability to stabilize. I think they had a, a really rough early game with their comp, but obviously did the classic XL thing. What, what, what stood out to you guys in terms of uh, uh, a highlight from today? I'm just going to yoink it before anyone else gets it. This game. I mean, this game delivered what we wanted. This is the competitive kind of setting I want for this league. The way that Trick are playing. Even you can say that Monster Rock B Gaming didn't win. Uh, uh, and it really didn't come down to the play because the way they played in the early game, they starved out Trick for so many resources and they did that well. They played their composition as best that they could do with the resources they have gotten. But the fact is that Twitch just got, uh, not Twitch, but Trick just outscaled them and they played better towards that win condition. As Soft said, this meta suits the late game conditions. And I love the way that you can utilize or kind of highlight how, the two, how these two playstyles thrive, where trick showed that the later game it's just it's just thriving better it feels like in this group there's two buckets now there's the excel the tricked and the ends and then there's the singularities um <laughs> the riddles and uh the monsters so it's like these these guys who are playing like this very skirmish heavy very relying on your skill matchups and then more of like the team cohesive macro play and i think that that's kind of cool to see emerge in this group and now the question is you know if we have a a, a big meta shift let's say i think the split is rel relatively short so it shouldn't be that impactful but let's say you do do you suddenly see the the comeback rise of like singularity and riddle and monster being more successful will these teams and their two different uh, strategies of like deadly strategy of you know scrim games are or stage games are scrim games or soft strategy of you know losing is learning be able to mean that they have the adaptability and like the versatility to continue to grow as teams as times as metas shift 
Well, guys, uh, it's been a it's been a pretty long day. Uh, we've had a lot of exciting <laughs> games. Let's let's take a look at the standings. Let's get a let's get a recoup of where we are and uh, where teams may have shifted to. This is Division A. XL and Nordivin still joint at the top at four and one, but the middle of the pack is still there and running. Unfortunately, Singularity still uh, just continuing to slip away. Let's look over at Division B here, and we can have a look at those standings. Uh, and you can see Fnatic at the top. Tricks now four and one, hot on the heels of the Fnatic squad, and could level things out if Fnatic lose. And obviously at the bottom, just Eminem still struggling at zero four. Uh, okay, uh, before we move on, we have a carefully selected play of the day, of which I believe was also chosen by our resident orcs. So uh, let's have a look at the play of the day. Uh, we can briefly run over it again. Yeah, and this is from the XL game. And I just wanted to highlight again, I think it's just a clutch moment coming out from Sendo. The main emphasis here is we have things like the Heimer, which make it so difficult when you're trapped in a Baron pit. And we can see that clearly the Baron steal is the goal here for End. So they look to get the Volley Bear in. Sendo sees as an opportunity, grabs the Volley Bear. And look at that instant damage that comes in. Obviously with the set ult, you do damage based on your opponent's max HP. And it very quickly turned from a situation where I could see Ends corralling them into the pit and taking the fight. Instantly, Sendo makes it a dominant situation for XL. Yeah, and uh, that was the turnaround point, realistically, of this game, it felt like. Uh, I mean, Sendo just... I feel like he was one of the shining lights for XL in this particular game. It felt like even with all the attention thrown at him, he was still able to come out on top. Guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Tomorrow, we have Barrage versus Dusty. We have Eminem versus Fnatic. XL versus Godsend, and then Ents versus Riddle. We've got lots of good games to go through, so make sure you join us at the same time, same place tomorrow. We'll see you there.